you, the ability to fill it and do it simultaneously so that it can be Okay, number one, you're listening very carefully. Stand up and give your chaperones just a tiny bit of what they deserve. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. for us. So there's no way we can repay them, but at least they know how much we care about them. Two more people we could not do this year, have done this year without. I had no idea it was going to be when we canceled the truck because we were shipping. I didn't realize that shipping was worse than using the truck. And that was, where are they? Yes, Mr. Chapin and Mike. Mike. amount of hours and the responsibility are our trip leaders and I, I don't think we ever appreciate them unless you've worked with them as long as I have because they have to put up with me and with all of you for a very long time so can we thank them. <laughs> other people want to tell you and we'll try to keep it as short as possible how proud we are of what you've done on this trip nobody gave up a lot of people really felt like giving up but you didn't and that I hope is what you're going to remember and I want you to think before the media hits you again and it will hit you again tomorrow and the next day because they're going to be at school on Friday, I know it. On Friday, I want you all there. I want you proudly wearing the tour shirts that we haven't had a chance to wear because it's way too cold here, but it won't be there. And I need you to think about, I always want you to tell the truth. That's the most important thing. But you have to make sure, and this is why I didn't talk to the media last night, because I didn't have time to process how I was feeling. Now I'm feeling totally different than I did last night. Yes, we suffered. Yes, it was painful. Yes, we sacrificed. But what we got from it, to me now, is worth it. I wasn't sure it was last night. But tonight I am sure it was. Because now I can go home and tell everyone how amazing you were and what you accomplished. And I hope when you're speaking to the media, and they don't really want to hear from me, they want to hear from you, that you can process and always, hopefully, have the cup half full rather than half empty. That's really important to me. You know how much I care about you, and yeah, I yell, and yes, I'm Italian. I was glad I was Italian yesterday, because that warm blood did help me keep you going to the end of the parade. So, thank you, thank you for what you've done, and thank you for what you're going to do, because I know now it's really the end of the trip, and it's really easy to think I don't have to do the correct thing anymore. I can let down. Please don't do that. That would be the best gift you can give me, is to do the rest of this. What we have to do tonight, getting up, even though you don't want to in the morning, especially uh, to Coach 2. I am so sorry about that you have to do that. It's another sacrifice, but you are going to get home early, and probably the media is going to be there. 
So you need to think about that and how you're going to handle that, okay? Make us proud. Please be kind to Ms. Green and Mr. Weiss so that they can, you know, everybody can come off being bubbly and excited. And I, uh, yes? Oh, there are some people you forgot that we need to give around. Who, who, who? Mrs. Green, uh, Ms. Green, Mr. Oh, I haven't forgotten the name. Mr. Zhao, and you, Mrs. Lyons. <laughs> Mr. Boyce was already asleep. But remember when we left, before we left in December, I was saying to you that all the other middle schools who applied to this parade were going to be looking at you and saying, why you, right? Okay. Why you? Why did you get accepted? You know, why are you the ones marching this parade? I think yesterday you definitely proved to at least yourselves why you were chosen. We had no stragglers. You have to understand, I think there were at least 21 stragglers who had to fall out, high school and adults, in this parade that couldn't make it. And everyone in the only middle school marching band in the inaugural parade bit the bullet and they made the entire route. So I'm really, I think all of us are incredibly proud of you for that. Okay? Mm -hmm. I know that yesterday there's plenty of things to be negative about, but in the words of Mrs. Wyant, I am the incurable optimist. <laughs> okay? You may never have to suffer that much in your life again, okay? But the positive thing about that is now you know each and every one of you can do that, right? It was hard, yeah? 
okay? And some of you, some of you are crying, all right? If I were, the, when I was that young, I probably would be crying too, all right? <laughs> okay? All right, I was incredibly emotional when we started marching in that street because I know how much you were suffering, but all of you were really putting yourselves out there representing you as a generation, you as a middle school, right? You as Americans. And that was really emotional for me. All right? So sweet, Mr. Joe. Thank you, Mr. Joe. That was the positive side of it. So whenever somebody tells you that they don't think you can do something, until the day that you die, you can think back to this, to yesterday, and think about what you accomplished, because it's huge. It is really, really huge, right? I want to share some of the positive experiences um, of mine from yesterday because I think that you know a couple years from now or even tomorrow when the you know the final pain goes away those are the things moments you're really gonna remember okay because the moments you remember in middle school and high school they're not these long drawn-out things they're really short moments so it wasn't the pain but for me the first mo uh, the first moment you remember the motorcade and we were driving next to the Washington Monument the really tall stick thing and you saw those oceans of people right at least on bus three, we were completely silent, just amazed at the amount of people that you saw, right? Pretty much. And then you started talking. Okay, that shows you how big of something that you were a part of, right? It was, you were a part of probably one of the most significant pieces or events of American history that we've had at this point. The first African-American president, okay? It's not about parties, it's not about political things, it's about history, okay? So seeing all those people, you were a part of that. You were a part of history. Okay, second thing was inside of the warming tent, right? Seeing all you among the Texas A&M band, the members of Punahou High School, Obama's high school, okay, all mixing together. I talked to a few of them, they were helping, trying to help us out with some of the instruments, all right? Watching the inauguration on the big screen television, hearing it on the big screen television, and then hearing it echo live outside of the tent. Did anyone else notice that? For me, yeah. that, was, that was surreal. That was amazing, okay? That was number two. Number three, you know, of course, was marching past the actual president right there, right? I saw all the whites of your eyes were like, <laughs> okay. okay. President Obama, Mrs. Obama, Malia, Sasha, I think maybe um, Senator Clinton, she was there. Okay. Vice President Biden, they all saw you. Think about that. They saw you live. They acknowledged your performance. Okay. They acknowledged what you do. Even though it's hard, even though you were suffering, they saw you. And that, to you, should be something very, very special. On a very, very special day of history. Okay? And lastly, I just want to remind you, for those of you who are still kind of hurting from yesterday, okay, a lot of people would have given anything to do what you did yesterday. Okay? To be able to just be in Washington, D.C., to participate in that, to even just be that close to the people that you were that close to in proximity. Okay, so just the, and just the fact that none of you dropped out, we're, we're so proud of you and beyond proud. So congratulations, you know, that's all I can say, thank you. and I had the opportunity when we went in, when we went into Washington DC to get your credentials to spend more time with Mr. Chow and that was a great experience he's hilarious <laughs> and you know he's just he's a lot of fun and uh, Mr. Wise took more pictures than was humanly possible um, Mr. and Mrs. Wyatt wow what a force what a force and I don't know if y'all are, are really 
cognizant of all the stuff they do to make this band what it is. Um, you know, I pointed out to my husband, who's in Cupertino, <laughs> didn't see your band there, did I? <laughs> um, you know, so he, um, he wore his t-shirt, I, I got him a t-shirt, and he wore his t-shirt and had it on in his room at Cupertino, not that I'm competitive or anything. So, um, you know, that was, that was really exciting. I mean, there was lots and lots of people all over the state of California, California that were really rooting for you. So, um, I wanted to say all of that. But the group I'm the most proud of, of course, is you. And Mrs. Wyant's right, and so is Mr. Jow. You know, people drop like flies, and you were still there, and you still had big smiles on your faces as you went by us. Um, last but not least, you know, districts are, and you know, schools are, they're really, they're only as good as their leadership. And I would like to thank Mr. Weiss, because without him and without him at the helm and doing the things that he does, we wouldn't be able to go anywhere or do anything. So thank you, Mr. Weiss, and thank you. And as you learned at the wig shop tonight, it's the big wig, Mr. Weiss. <laughs> um, again, I'm, I'm speaking last. So I agree with everybody um, that spoke already. Um, thank you to everybody in this room. Parents, can't thank you enough for all of your help. Um, we know you have significant others at home too that are helping and supporting. Um, I want to talk a little bit about home and then talk a little bit about uh, music teachers. Uh, we're an interesting breed of people. Um, so let me tell you what's happening back home. I mentioned to you when we spoke to you a few days ago that we had a blog up on our website and people could email us. And um, I'm going to put together all of the fantastic messages that came to you. There's so much energy coming from Saratoga and across the world supporting you. So I'm going to print those up. This is why I put some pictures put them in a binder. Awesome. Your parents emailed us wishing support and people were cheering us on. Uh, Mrs. Green and I had the opportunity to wait in line for about six hours yesterday, um, at least. And people were texting me and emailing me as we were going on, um, talking about what was going on. And um, your parents, your families were glued to the TV to look for that moment that Redwood was there and was so exciting for people um, to do that. So I'll get all that information to you and so on. What I want to talk to you about is when we go back tomorrow, or for some of us in about a half hour. <laughs> um, people, the mayor of Saratoga has been talking to my office all day, wanting to welcome you back. And I don't know what that's going to look like. I've requested that whatever it is, it happens at Redwood. So the city council, the mayor, wants to do a big homecoming welcome thing. Mrs. Aww. Green and I have been talking with TV, radio, and newspapers for especially Thanks. a lot for the last 24 hours. And we're trying to protect your time, but like Mrs. Wyant said, they are so anxious to talk to you. And when it really, really hit, I think the mayor and everybody else, you were broadcast on CNN, you were broadcast on ABC, you were on the Today Show. People said, Red, <laughs> who was it? Was that you guys? <laughs> um, people want to be a part of what you were, and it's contagious. They see the excellence that you demonstrate, and people want to be a part of that. So, like Mrs. Wyant said, hold your head up, keep what you're doing up all the way through, um, and let's make this a great thing as we talk with people and share the stories. And there are many stories, aren't there? Yeah. That's another thing we need to do is share the great stories. Uh, what I put on the blog is how proud I am of you. I felt so proud to be an American. I felt proud to be from Saratoga and to be affiliated with our school district in Redwood. The excellence um, the teachers demonstrate and that you demonstrate is phenomenal. I feel fortunate and I felt really blessed just to be next to you in the parade and to cheer. I'm sorry I yelled so much. I was so excited <laughs> to have you guys go by. It was just a really thrilling moment. So thank you. And that's a lifelong memory. So now about music teachers. <laughs> throughout my school career and throughout my life, the people that have had the biggest impact on me besides my family have been music teachers. And um, I hope you can take in the greatness 
that you've, uh, we've been fortunate enough to provide to you in our school district. And it's not just about the music. It's about the sticking with it part. It's about the being responsible and having pride and doing your best. These are life lessons, and I hope these life lessons will stay with you forever. And I really want to thank uh, Mr. Zhao and Mrs. Wyatt for the great educators and people that they are, because you learned much more than just about music and marching. You learned about life, and that's something you can take with you forever, and it's the best educational gift we can give to you. So hats off to Redwood. <laughs> Bed. But I want to say, normally at the end of a trip, I have done this for 14 years. 14 years, a lot of bands in 14 years. Normally, I'm the one that always thanks the teacher and has the band thank the teacher. I've got to tell you guys, 14 years, maybe five, have thought on their own. Good job, Anu to thank the teacher. So good job for all of you guys for being so respectful. All right, Coach 2, you're going. Tour shirt, if you want to pick up your bag. Good luck, God bless you, and I'll see you on Friday at 7 See you, bless you. <laughs> Yeah. See you at school on Friday. Love is doing good. Did anybody leave these on bus three from Coach Two?